for the War and Peace Report as we move now to the U.S. State Department calling on the Rwandan government to release attorney Peter Erlander, the past president of the National Lawyers Guild. Erlander has been in prison for the past week after being charged with denying the Rwandan genocide. The Minnesota-based attorney was arrested shortly after arriving in Rwanda to help with the legal defense of opposition presidential candidate Victoire Ingabire, who has been accused of promoting genocidal ideology. The Rwandan government has been accused of using laws barring genocide denial to silence opposition critics. Peter Erlander was interviewed May 23rd, shortly before he arrived in Rwanda. My first obligation, of course, is to meet with my client, uh, Victoire Ingabiri, and uh, to discuss the situation that she, in which she finds herself. I understand she's under um, uh, house arrest or limited travel circumstances and that her passport has been seized. Um, but, of course, the, the first uh, order of business is to see to her condition. Many analysts say that this is a political trial. This is going to be a political trial. And your name has been mentioned by the uh, newspapers in Kigali, by the prosecutor, as one of the lawyers who are abusing of their position and their scholarship to promote genocidal ideology. How do you think you're going to be welcomed in Kigali? Well, uh, if Kigali is a country that respects the rule of law and uh, concepts of uh, freedom of expression and freedom of speech, um, I should be treated as any other professional would be. Uh, of course, how I'm treated is, uh, will tell us a lot about the nature of the government and the nature of the prosecution against Madame Ingabiri. That is Peter Erlander, just as he was arriving in Rwanda. We're joined in Washington now by two guests. Scott Erlander is the brother of Peter Erlander and a professor of law at DePaul University. David Gespass is president of the National Lawyers Guild. David Gespass, let's begin with you. Explain why Peter Erlander is being held and what's being done to release him. Well, as far, from our point of view, he's being held because he was acting as a vig vigorous, conscientious advocate for his clients. Virtually everything he has said has been in the context of representation of clients before the International Criminal Tribunal in Rwanda and the presidential candidate. Uh, we have, uh, in the Guild, asked people right now to call members of Congress uh, to keep pressure. The State Department initially was kind of hands-off in their response to us. They said, all we can do is provide consular services. Uh, they seem to be much more aggressively now approaching the issue and doing what they can to secure Peter's quick release. Uh, and what we are asking people to do is really ask Congress to make sure that the spotlight be placed on this. I think Peter in the interview stated very well what the situation is. Uh, either the uh, Kagame government is willing to allow the allegations that Peter's making and the claims he's making to be heard in a open, fair, public, transparent trial, or it's not. And if it's not, I think that says a lot about the government. Scott Erlander, you're Peter's brother, also professor of law at DePaul University. Uh, we have heard reports that, uh, that your brother, that Peter Erlander attempted suicide in jail. Can you explain what you understand? Yeah, but first let me clarify. I'm, I'm not a professor of law. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cinematographer and teach film and video production. Um, uh, what I understand uh, about uh, the, this whole suicide issue uh, was that somehow Peter overdosed on medicine. Uh, I, I can't really imagine him being of the mindset to do something like this, which, which has you know, made the family very, very worried. Um, because it's just so illogical. Uh, and I think that, you know, our feeling is no, no matter what has happened politically, that at this point, you know, the, the best thing to do is to get him home because our contact with him has been very limited. Uh, and we're all just horribly concerned about this. And uh, I, I just can't imagine that, that the government would, would do what they did, knowing the fact that uh, my, my brother has. Uh, may not have said things that they, that he liked that they liked, but um, that what is the he, State Department uh, doing? Have they communicated just, with you? Uh, yeah, they, most of the the contact has been making sure that he's okay. They've they've brought him a uh, uh, a nurse to make sure that he's uh, 
uh, being looked at by sort of the American perspective. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been getting some fairly decent reports, not only from state, but also for some, some local uh, lawyers that are there from uh, Uganda. Uh, but still, it's very sketchy information, and, uh, you know, we're hoping for more. We, we had a meeting with state yesterday, uh, and uh, we've we really pushed them to uh, get in there and give us more information and, and give us uh, give us a background of what happened. David Guestpass, um, President Kibagami re receives hundreds of millions of dollars from the United States. Uh, what leverage does the U.S. have here? I, well, they can obviously withhold all that money. Uh, the, the United States, of course, is engaged in diplomacy, and they are, I think, less concerned about Peter's uh, fate than they are about the other issues that are are they have to address vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the Rwandan government. That, that being said, uh, I think at this point they're quite concerned about Peter's fate, and we were told that they have conveyed their concern to every level of the, the Rwandan government. David Gaspas will have to leave it there, uh, president of the National Lawyers Guild, Scott Erlander, brother of Peter Erlander, uh, professor at DePaul University. That does it for the show. I'll be in Washington, D.C. tonight at Busboys and Poets, tomorrow in Washington, D.C., then in Seattle on Sunday. Check our website. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.